In this lesson, we are going to discuss rejection. At the end of this video lesson, you should be able to differentiate ionizing and non-ionizing rejection and identify the effects of electromagnetic waves on living things and the environment. We may all be familiar with the symbol. We usually see this in X-ray imaging rooms of hospitals. But is it similar with this one? These two symbols are different except that these two are symbols for radiation. Radiation is the energy that comes from a source and travels through space and may be able to penetrate different materials. Radiation has a negative context beyond the scientific community. If we are asked what is the source of radiation, we usually associate it with nuclear power plants. Nuclear power plants are efficient and cheap sources of electrical energy. Electricity is generated by the turbines which are moved by the steam from the water. This is where the nuclear reaction enters the scene. Water is heated through nuclear fission which occurs in the nuclear power plant's reactor that contains uranium fuel. In nuclear fission, atoms are split apart to form smaller atoms releasing energy. However, a different nuclear reaction happens in the sun. Here, nuclear fusion happens. In nuclear fusion, two or more atomic nuclei are combined to form one or more different atomic nuclei or subatomic particles. These two reactions result in the formation of radioactive particles. Suppose we have an element X. This letter is the element symbol. We are going to consider two important numbers. First, a, which denotes the atomic mass or the sum of the protons and neutrons in an atom. And second, Z, which denotes the number of protons. Radiation may come from the particles which are created by unstable atoms. Suppose we have an unstable uranium atom. It has an atomic number of 92 and an atomic mass of 238. Due to instability, it may lose two protons retaining only 90 protons. Since it lost two protons, it would lose four atomic mass units, giving it an atomic mass of 234. Since the number of protons is always unique in each element, this product of decay created a new element. This is now thorium. The lost particle would then have a mass of 4 and a number of protons of 2. This is now helium. This radioactive decay is what we call alpha decay. The radioactive particle here is the alpha particle. These particles cannot penetrate a paper or the skin but are dangerous when released inside the body. Another nuclear process which causes radiation is beta decay. Suppose we have beryllium which has an atomic mass of 8 and atomic number of 4. In beta decay, the atom may have excess neutrons. In this case, there will be no change on the atomic mass. But one neutron will become a proton that will stay in the atom, and an electron that will be given off. Since there was an increase in the atomic number, the identity of the atom changes. In beta decay, atoms may also have too much protons. There will also be no change in the atomic mass here. In this case, the proton becomes a neutron which will decrease the atomic number, thus forming a new element. It will also change into a positron which has the same mass with the electron. These particles removed from the atom are highly energetic particles which we call beta particles. The electron or the negative particle is the beta negative particle, and the positron or the positive particle is the beta positive particle. Both particles can penetrate the first layers of the skin which results to burns. Sometimes, nuclear reactions do not lead to the emission of particles. For example, this unstable atom with atomic mass A and atomic number Z may undergo decay but may still retain its atomic mass and atomic number. Rather, it releases high energy waves which we call the gamma radiation. These are high energy waves which may break nucleic acids such as the DNA and RNA. From this, we can learn that particles are not only responsible for radiation, but so are waves. Electromagnetic radiation is composed of the waves of the electromagnetic spectrum which carry various amounts of energy through space. Take note that the term electromagnetic waves is synonymous with electromagnetic radiation. We have previously discussed the components of the electromagnetic spectrum and their practical uses. Although generally beneficial, electromagnetic waves may pose some hazards especially on organisms. As we have discussed from the past lesson, EM waves are arranged based on their wavelengths. 
longer wavelength would mean a lower frequency, and a shorter wavelength would mean a higher frequency. The frequency of the wave gives us an idea of the energy of the wave. Low frequency waves such as those from the radio waves up to the low frequency UV rays have low energy. On the other hand, high frequency waves such as those from the high frequency UV rays up to the gamma rays have high energy. The energy of the wave now tells us the effect of the EM radiation on the chemical structures of matter. Gamma rays from nebulas and galaxies impose high risk to their surroundings. If ever these gamma rays reach the proximity of the Earth, this may destroy our atmosphere and cause a series of mass extinctions. Medical imaging technologies which require high frequency waves, like 2D X-rays and CT scans, also pose some harm on us. This is the reason why we should limit ourselves from having X-ray imaging unless really necessary. Usually, two X-ray imaging procedures per year are tolerated. Other medical imaging technologies such as MRI and ultrasound are not harmful because MRI uses low-frequency waves and ultrasound imaging uses sound waves which are mechanical waves. It is also important to take note that radiation is not always bad. In sterilization, UV light is used to destroy the genetic sequences of microorganisms which may cause certain diseases. However, safety attires are still needed so that humans will not be affected. These high-energy waves impose a great risk on the environment. These are called ionizing radiation. High-energy waves are ionizing which creates electrically charged ions which can break apart atoms and molecules, especially of organisms. On the opposite side of the spectrum, we have the low-frequency waves. For radio waves, microwaves, infrared, visible light, and lower-frequency ultraviolet rays, Energy is not enough to remove an electron from atoms or molecules. Thus, these EM radiation are non-ionizing. The sunlight is composed of three different UV radiation, UVA, UVB, and UVC. Generally, the sunlight is non-ionizing since it triggers the synthesis of vitamin D and tanning. UVA and some waves of UVB can penetrate the Earth's atmosphere but UVC and some amount of UVB are reflected back to space. If this high-frequency UV rays reach the Earth's surface, this may cause skin cancer. Infrared lamps which are generally used as heat source for different organisms are also non-ionizing. Have you experienced being warned for eating microwave-heated food because the food may become radiated? Were not because microwave does not really ionize the food unless the microwave malfunctions and releases shorter wavelengths of EM wave. And have you been scolded for using your phones too much and near your face? Well, that is somehow true. Radio waves which are received and sent by the phone are non-ionizing. Cancer risk from sleeping with your phone near your head are not really scientifically proven according to the National Cancer Institute. The screens of our phones, especially now that we have large full-screen phones, use visible light which is also non-ionizing. However, overexposure on this especially on blue light may cause some complications on the eye. That is why the use of anti-radiation eyeglasses while using our gadgets is helpful. According to a 2017 study of the University of Houston, it blocks a significant amount of blue light radiation that may cause macular degeneration. Overall, non-ionizing radiation are safe in the right amount of exposure and use, especially for those which are near high-end frequencies. But how do we know how much is an overexposure to radiation? Radiation is quantified in sieverts. Sievert is the standard metric unit for the measurement of radiation. One sievert is already very dangerous that it may cause symptoms of radiation sickness. 1 mSv is the annual public dose limit, but only 0.6 mSv is the average radiation which we get. Half of this annual radiation comes from natural radiation like radon in the air, trace amounts of cosmic rays, and even the Earth itself. The other half comes from man-made radiation such as daily technologies and medical technologies. A typical chest x-ray gives us 0.1 mSv. That is why we are warned to limit our exposure with x-ray. If we become overdosed by the radiation around us, several problems are waiting. In organisms, the main hazard is the damage on the genetic sequences that lead to mutations. The genes in the gametes may be damaged, therefore passing the damaged genes to the offspring. This genetic mutation is called gametic or germline mutation. 
This teaches us to be responsible with the use of radiation because defects may be passed on to the next generation. Another type of mutation is somatic mutation, which cannot be passed on to the next generation. This happens when certain body parts become exposed to too much radiation. It may affect the person during their lifetime, especially if the exposed cells are those which are actively dividing because the damage will be more evident when more numerous cells have the mutant genes. Being exposed to high amounts of radiation, Marie Curie, the two-time Nobel Peace Prize awardee for her discovery on radioactivity, and radium and polonium died of aplastic pernicious anemia, a disorder in the stem cells of the bone marrow. Due to her high exposure to radiation, even her coffin is lined with lead so that the radiation will not emanate outside to affect others. Some organisms may appear normal but are highly radioactive. In fact, the animals and plants in Chernobyl are mutants. This is due to the 1986 Chernobyl nuclear accident in Pripyat, Ukraine. This nuclear accident was due to reactor design flaws and serious breach of protocol during simulated power outage safety test. Even if decades have already passed after the accident, the radiation is still in high amounts until now. This makes Pripyat a ghost city in Ukraine. This is also the world's worst nuclear accident. The second is in Fukushima, Japan. The 2011 Fukushima nuclear power plant disaster is just one of the after-effects of the magnitude 9, 2011 Japan earthquake. The radioactive materials even dispersed in water, especially in the Pacific Ocean. Events like this are not really in our control, but the prevention of this event should be well thought of to protect the lives of organisms and even our habitat. Now, to conclude this lesson, let us review the following key points. Radiation is the energy that comes from a source and travels through space and may be able to penetrate various materials. Radiation sources may be classified as nuclear or electromagnetic, and natural or man-made. Ionizing radiation can break apart atoms and molecules that may cause mutation in organisms. It includes nuclear radiation and high-energy EM radiation. And lastly, Non-ionizing radiation does not remove particles from atoms or molecules due to low energy. This includes low-energy EM radiation. And that ends our discussion on radiation.